Good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you, uh, our St. Michael's regulars, and those of you who are visiting, a very warm welcome to you all. Um, and I would like to mention to you that the OWLS, the Older Wiser Learning Sharing Group, will be having a Eucharist uh, this Thursday at 12 o'clock, followed by a bring your own lunch. So please join us if you can. We'll be outside in the Manly Garden. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement, and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, 
The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves saying, tell those who had been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away. One to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel reading today is definitely not one of the easy ones. The Psalm, Psalm 23, now that's easy. And it's tempting to preach the easy stuff. But the hard reading, that's the one for me today. And for you. Interestingly, though, the key to understanding the hard scripture is to know and to love the easier one. The key to Jesus' hard teaching today in the parable of the wedding banquet is to remember the 23rd Psalm. Because if you believe that God loves you and wants the best for you and doesn't want to see us bound hand and foot and tossed into outer darkness, then you will see what the parable of the wedding banquet means. If you don't believe that Jesus is the son of that Lord is my shepherd, God. If you don't know he guides us by the still waters, if you don't know that he prepares a table before us and our cups runneth over, then you might think that the God Jesus talks about today is not the God for you. If you didn't already know about the good shepherd God of Jesus, a parable like this one sounds pretty rough. I mean, if God is like a king who throws parties that nobody wants to go to and can only get people to come to his house by force and then throws them out if they're not properly dressed, you might not want to worship that God either. But if you do know the God who not only dreams but creates a world of love and hope, and if you know a bit about the history of the people of God he's been trying to love all these years, then maybe this parable makes more sense. This parable is really two parables stuck together. The first is a history 
of the ups and downs of the people of God, as described in the Old Testament. A people made for joy, who God made the world for, a people who God created in generosity to share with him as bearers of the divine image. A beautiful world created by the Lord of the dance who seeks us all to be with him in a banquet of everlasting celebration. The first part of the parable tells the story of the God who has done all that for a people who think, ah, well, what we want. What we want. What we do, that's more important to us than what God wants or what God does. Our concerns, our agendas, our desires and lives and needs, that's what matters to us. God made a world for joy. And he put us in it. But we don't care about his gift, about his dream, about his invitation. And not only do we not care, sometimes we'll even do violence to the very gift that God has given us we will even reject and kill it like we did to Jesus. The second part of the parable is about how even though God has invited all kinds to be with him, regardless of birth or rank or anything, good or bad, smart and dumb, and given us a golden ticket to enter his dream world with him, we should have respect. We should have awe. We should have thanksgiving for what God has given us. All we need to do to enjoy the free gift is to be grateful. Grateful for the grace we've been given. Because gratitude is the response of grace. Which means that the guy at the end of the parable who's not wearing his wedding robe and who gets tossed out, he's not just some poor rube who doesn't know what to wear. He's the self-centered person who dishonors his host and does what he wants to do, no matter the ground rules. Always on his own terms, because he thinks the world is all about him. He's the one who rejects the free gift of grace by a bitter lack of gratitude. The guy that gets thrown out of the wedding banquet in today's parable, he is an unflappable ingrate. And such as these, are not chosen to remain in the kingdom of God. If you didn't know how much God loves you, I could see how today's lesson would be hard to hear. I don't think it's a parable for people who don't already know a little bit about God's love and the history of God's love 
on earth and in our own lives. But if we do know that God loves us and how many blessings he's poured out, then we can hear this and be reminded of how many times we've probably forgotten to be grateful. How many times we've acted as if the world was all about us. The world is a hard place. And sometimes it already feels like we're bound, hand and feet, in a place of darkness. Sometimes our teeth are already set to gnashing in this world. Even small children already know how hard this life can be and is. It is crucial that you know and that I know that the God who made us made us for a plan that includes our welfare and our joy for whatever is good and true. And Jesus says, we also need to know that we have some repenting to do. We are blessed and cherished and loved, but we do need to put on that wedding robe that God has given us. We can't think we will remain in God's gracious presence if we're not willing to do the one thing he asks. What he asks for is a sign of our love and our thanksgiving. Our wedding garment, therefore, is the love of God for us that we will put on and which will inspire us to love ourselves and our neighbors. If we wish to stay in God's banquet, we must put on Christ and love one another as he loves us. Amen. In peace, I bid the prayers of this people for the cares and concerns of the church and the world and for all people in their daily life and work. For those endangered by war, for our enemies and ourselves, that all people might respond to your love and open their hearts to reconciliation. For this community, the nation, and the world, for the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially those affected by COVID-19. We pray for the Episcopal Farm Worker Ministry in Newton Grove and the members of that community who struggle during this difficult time. May they find hope for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We pray for all who have died, especially Joan Burton, Bonnie Dempster, and those who have died during this pandemic alone and afraid, and those who died in war, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers.
the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.